into a certain posture, which is very typical for rocket yoga especially, but it comes up very often in different yoga sequences and yoga flows, and it's a wonderful way to continue practicing and developing arm strength. So it's what most of you always ask me about to show a little bit more detail, and it's called Bakasana. So Bakasana is literally about arm strength, but for me it's so much more, it's actually um, a way to feel balance of your weight between hips and chin. We're getting into it right now, but also about controlling your center. So it's not just about balancing yourself, it's also of controlling the strength and putting it to the right order, to the right places. So literally what it is all about, um, we're going to start warming up our wrists. So we might just get our elbows um, to the very level of our shoulders, interlace your fingers and give it some nice big circles. So if you feel it or if you hear it cracking, that's fine, we're still cold. As long as you find a comfortable sit or sitting posture, that's perfect. You can also sit on a block or on a cushion and change direction. And keeping your elbows together, so don't or don't open up too much. That activates also all the parts in your upper back. And from here, we are going to take our our right fingers and push forward that area of your wrists as far as you can without bringing your shoulder forward. So you want to keep it back and just bring push your fingers as much as you can back. Change sides. Okay, you can just shake it out and then let's get closer into it. So for all of you who don't know Bakasana yet, I'm going to show it so you might get more interested in learning it. Bakasana is literally a posture where you're balancing on top of your hands and you're trying to get rid of all the weight on your legs and feet. So it's um, actually a counterbalance between forward and backwards and it gives you more much more feeling about all the strength that you have in your palm. It's not only about that area, it's so much about your fingertips as well. So what do we need for that? We need strength in our center, we need strength in our arms and a lot of consciousness that we can keep that strength there and we need to squeeze, it's mostly about squeezing. So there are some postures um, in a normal yoga flow, I always used to apply it to our rocket sequences. It makes you understand better how to move them. So first of all, we're starting in a table pose. You can relax your feet or you can put your toes. Let's start just breathing. Breathing is always important to find posture, getting in and out of them. In your exhalation, push, push all your air out. And bring your belly up as much as you can, letting your head fall and pushing into the floor. In your inhalation, you do just the opposite. Bring your navel down and really find all activation of your muscles in your back, bringing your shoulder blades together and lengthening your throat. So you want to really uprise here. And in your exhalation, again, push your navel up, feel that strength, that power in your center. And inhalation, open up your chest, always to the front and up, and bring your shoulder, shoulder blades together. Exhale one more time. So this is something we need to apply after an hour bakasana. You can do it as many times as you feel. You can make use of it. Always breathing. And whenever you're there, we are getting back into a neutral position. So we are getting a little further into our plank pose. So you literally would just put your knees up, find a strong line in your legs. And that's another very nice sequence in yoga. If you can hold a plank, like at least for some seconds breathing quietly here without that your hip is collapsing down or staying too high that's already a very nice start you bend your elbows only your elbows back and come down controlled so if you still manage you can get, get back up and we do it once more your chin wants to go as far forward as possible so you feel your, your elbows really like scratching your ribs and back again. Your, your um, back is always holding. So this is literally the very important part for Bhakasana. We want to close up 
So this was the part of this position and we want to have that flexion control. It's not a falling down. What happens very often, just try to avoid that your elbows are opening to the sides. You always want to keep them close together and bend them back. So you can just try that, applying it to every vinyasa, chaturanga in yoga. We're getting into our last center exercise. So then it would be, it should be easy, much more easy and logical to come in our vakasana. So we are sitting. We're trying to get our hands very nicely and comfortable um, just under our shoulders. Feel alignment here and replace your knees with your feet. Okay, again, hip width apart and nice. So first of all, we push up, try to align your entire upper body and legs with the floor. You can draw your head and first of all, feel resistance in your arms straight. What we do then is to just focus much more on your heels and you would swing back your buttocks without touching the floor, keep it up and push into your hands. So if you manage to straighten your legs, that's perfect. And in your inhalation, you open up again, you can let your head fall back. And exhale here, bring it all up, push your navel in and activate your back. Inhale, open up. So it's literally like, like a swing. Inhale, that opens up and warms our shoulders. If you need, you can also always use blocks below you. So you have more space to shift your hips forward and backward. Let's bring it all together into our first Bakasana. We just start to actually sit back. If you manage, try to squeeze your knees now towards your elbows and press at the same time your elbows to the sides. You want to feel that strength, that pushing and pulling in between your elbows and your knees. Try to lengthen your spine here. So if this is very easy for most of you, some of you, you can also bring the fists together and open that area of your knees a little more. And what we're doing here, we are establishing this very connection that from now we don't want to lose it anymore. I want to integrate all movements that we just experienced in one posture. I'm pulling forward my chin as much as I can because I want to transfer all that weight that is sitting in here towards my chin, so I'm getting it longer and longer forward. My elbows are still pushing back. I'm placing my hands as comfortably and open as I can to the floor, always shoulder, shoulder width apart. And then I'm starting to push my hip first up, but I don't lose that connection of like a little higher than my elbows and my knees. So from here I'm shifting by pushing up my, pulling up my heels, I'm shifting my weight off my, hip, my hips on top of those arms and I might just stay here and feel until which point I feel the weight in my fingertips okay so you might just stay here and feel how that weight is getting stronger on your knees so if you manage to stay here your throat is always long and you're really opening your shoulder blades behind so you have a really round back if you have that you start getting rid of one foot on the floor maybe the other, and feel that nothing else changes in that posture. You're, you're trying to freeze. And if that really comes very nice into you, you can try to do it at the same time. Remember, your chin is really long forward. You don't want to collapse just where your fingers are or your hands are. You want to go more over there. So you are always kind of making a balance of your weight and your hands are just resisting the weight and distributing, okay? So I would say this is pretty much all about Bakasana. Keep trying, keep exercising and there is much more coming up. If you would like to get some more variations in Bakasana, it's going to be up in my channel. Have fun!